a splash of local color, flavor, and sound. So here's a sampling of what the runners will see and hear. My name is David. Thanks, Lauren. And the men are right about uh, the seven-mile mark, so they should be there in uh, five minutes, less than five minutes. So we'll check back in with Lauren. Going back to moment. Lakeview, it doesn't surprise me that it's Lady Gaga. <laughs> Lady Gaga. Uh, you can always get a little burst of energy and entertainment right there. Kind of get the runners on through. Um, Mike, the uh, Xfinity world record splits. What are the guys running right now for 10K? Well, they... 10K, 29-17, and we should mention that these are the world record splits of Patrick McCow from Kenya when he set the world record at 203-38 in Berlin earlier this year, last month, as a matter of fact. The men were a little behind that at 29-40. Currently, they're on and continue to be on just under 205 pace. In fact, uh, 204-50 pace because their last mile was run in 4 minutes and 42 seconds. And this is this is a decision time for a lot of people because when you realize you're running that fast, 204-50 on kind of a warmish day, this is where Ryan Hall is having to make the decision. And he has made the decision. He's on the far left in the, in the red with the USA. Uh, and he's made the decision to go ahead and go with a stiff pace. So the guys have clearly made up a little bit of time because before they were on pace for what, what did you say? A you know, 2.06, the, the, first, the first couple of miles they were getting into the rhythm, but now they have decided, okay, we're going to get out and run. And at 2.04.50 pace right now, they're looking very, very comfortable as they go. And, and Hall has made the decision to go with the top Kenyans and Ethiopians and, uh, and run, a, run a, a hard race. Remember, Ryan set his PR 204.58 in Boston this year, but again, that was a point-to-point -point race and not a circular race like this one. That was a point-to-point -point with a 20 mile per hour a tailwind at times, and so this is a really a gutsy move on his part. He's going to continue, and I think he just wanted to get out and show that he could run with the the big boys. He certainly has done extremely well in marathons, and uh, he's having a good one so far. So again, the men, their uh, 10K, they ran, have run it in 29:40. They are approaching Lauren, who is in the Lakeview neighborhood. I don't know if she has a a vantage point of these guys or not, but they should be close and they will be getting the Lady Gaga spectacle. And <laughs> it's like we said, it's always it's it's always something entertaining in the Lakeview neighborhood. Okay, we've Lauren. seen you see Ryan yeah, over at the left side, I think he's drawing energy from the crowd, but also running the tangent. He the tangent, sees that there exactly. was a t turn coming up, and so he, he veered over to the left uh, and uh, made that tangent a little shorter. Ryan Hall looking for his first marathon major win. 28 years old, a graduate from Stanford. Smart fella. And he is shooting for the Olympic trials in January. That's his big goal. Yeah, and he, he raised some eyebrows with some people when he decided to run the Chicago Marathon. Most of the top American marathoners are focusing on those Olympic trials in January. Quite frankly, I believe he felt like there was a bit of a cushion between he and a lot of the other marathoners, that he's good enough that, that he could run this race and then come back with just a 14-week buildup. Um, and I think that's probably true with him. He also said that he needs a goal, uh, that it would have been almost a year between Boston and the Olympic trials. He felt like that was too long for him, and so he needed another race. And he wanted to run another flat race, uh, which is what he, the Olympic trials are going to be on a flat course. Chicago Marathon is flat and fast. And so those all were decisions that came into play for him to decide to uh, run the Chicago Marathon. Last mile, 457, a projected 205.20. Yeah, so that was uh, significantly slower, and, and as a result, you kind of see that pa that pack uh, bunching up a little bit, and, and that may have been due to the turns that they had to negotiate or whatever. But um, but again, you just want to put yourself in that pack. You want to run as comfortably and as easy as possible. We've seen that Moses has been, as uh, Tony said, the alpha male in that pack trying to get things going. Okay, we've got 19,233 runners from the state of Illinois and runners from over 100 countries. We're right back at the Bank of America Chicago Marathon. Good morning. It is shaping up to be a beautiful. Good morning. It is shaping up to be a beautiful race day here in Pilsen. Behind me, you can hear they're getting the volunteers ready for the aid station here in Pilsen. About 300 volunteers, many from the United Neighborhood Organization, all standing by to pass out Gatorade, wet sponges. It's going to be a lot of people coming through here in a very short time so they all want to be ready and welcome back everyone to the 34th running of the bank of america chicago 
marathon. The men have made their way past the eight mile mark and a special treat here in the booth. You know, everybody talks about the 85 Bears. Well, we have the 85 Chicago Marathon champ, Steve Jones, who's originally from Great Britain, now living in Colorado. Steve, welcome. Thank you. And uh, you ran a 207, 13 back in 85. Yeah, that, it was a bit of a breakthrough for running, I think, at that period. Uh, myself and Carlos Lopez, who, who had broken my world record previously, um, six months previously, sort of opened the door for the kind of times that have been run today, I think. Yeah, it has to be a little mind-boggling for you to um, think about the, these times that are being run. Yeah, it is, it is a little bit. Um, you know, we, you, we all know what we think we were capable of, uh, given the right day and the right conditions. Um, mm -hmm. And to see people running that much faster and that much quicker than we were at that t time is, is pretty awesome, really. But if you had the same things available that are available to today's athlete, good coaching, great coaching, different kinds of uh, workout sessions, could you compete today? Um, I think so, yeah. But, but the thing is, nothing's changed, really. The, the training philosophy is the same. The, the training principles are the same. I think it's just that uh, people's minds have opened now. There's not so many doors and not so many barriers that, that are holding them back. And I think, like I said, we opened the door for how people are running today, I think. We had a chance to see some of the video from 85, some vintage Steve Jones. You haven't changed a whole lot. You still running? Uh, no, I don't <laughs> run very much. So, no. <laughs> Just the moment. Uh, I have fits and starts where I maybe run for six weeks at a time, and then yeah. one morning I'll wake up and say I'm not going to run, and I might not run for another six weeks. You yeah. know, we've made a, we've made a big thing about uh, Lilia Shobakova going, becoming the only uh, athlete ever to win three in a row. You had a chance, would have had a chance to do that, having won in '84 and '85, but they didn't have the race in '86. No, but I think I came back and uh, won the half marathon, uh, and I'm not sure it was '86 or '87 that the half marathon was, but. Uh, yeah, it, it would have been nice to come and try. It, it would have been at the top of the list for the next marathon to do um, at, at that time. So it's just a shame they didn't. You, know. you won the same year as uh, Joan Benoit, too, back in 85, yeah, going back a little bit. Yeah, and I think we just bo both of us just be, uh, missed breaking the world record. You mm -hmm. know, I missed by one second, and I think Joan missed by a couple of seconds herself, you know, maybe. But uh, we both won, which was the most important thing. Great. We're going to be talking. Oh, go ahead. Ed. I'm, I'm saying you're doing a lot of coaching now. What, what's the main wisdom that you're passing on to these young guys that you're working with? Well, like I said, I don't think the training and the coaching principles have changed. I, I think what I bring to the table is um, is my experience. Uh, I, I'm, I think I'm a fairly good mo uh, mentor and motivator, and, and I, I I I just take care of my athletes. You know, um, it's we have a close relationship. It's a great great mm -hmm. feeling, and uh, I just try and help them progress. Why wouldn't you want to listen to this man? He has one of the <laughs> coolest accents on the planet, right? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, Tony, uh, an update on where the men are right now on the course. Well, we're just coming off North Clark, Paul and onto at North Webster. I'm really sort of surprised by that uh, that eighth mile at 457. Sure, they turned the, the we, we had the farthest north on the course and turned on Addison and then back heading towards south of course when they go south all the way down to the 23 mile mark now but the pack is well formed but that 457 was miled by a 451 and they're right on about 2000 the 2008 splits when evans chariot won the race in very similar conditions the pace is pretty much right on that mark but i'll tell you one thing ed when you're looking at these guys run you look at moses mosop well first of all he's got the hips of a 10 year old boy but secondly, he's, you can't believe how high up on his four feet he runs. He's, he's not a mid-foot runner. He's not a rear-foot runner. He's up on his toes the whole time. And you wonder why he has Achilles tendon problems. That's got to be part of it. There's enormous pressure on his Achilles the way he runs up on his toes. But he looks very strong. He's always been the guy that's tucked in behind the rabbits. But, you know, so far, because there's pacers out there, nothing's going to happen for a long period of time, but they're in their rhythm. I think they're running right around 2-6 flat pace. Yeah, there's a look at the Honda leaderboard. You can make out those numbers. We have the top eight listed for you. Steve, in your mind, why have the East Africans dominated this sport for the last 15 years? Because they've been better than us. <laughs> um, I think it's because they have no inhibitions, you know, and that there's no, you know, like I was talking about us breaking open the, the barriers and opening the doors for the kind of performances today. I think they've come into the sport um, 
relatively over the last 20 years with without these barriers that they have to feel they have to get through you know they come fearless they've no inhibitions and they just spread themselves on the road mm -hmm. you talked about uh, actually tony brought up the point about moses and and ed you touched on it as well that maybe his running form isn't uh up to par that's well, something that's easily easily solved you, well as a coach you try not to change that if you mm -hmm. can help it you know because most people when certainly at this level they certainly uh been running a long time and it, and to get to this level they've done something right you know mm -hmm. so you you just try and try and help help them get fitter and faster as opposed to tra change their gait or, or change their stride yeah 20306 i don't think he has to change anything no. he's yeah. in the john touch <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. fine a little yeah. unconventional but it's working right well yeah. you know he's up on his forefoot and he, he's running well and he's uh he's a machine and, and he's showing that and demonstrating that right now joni do you have an update on the women well it's getting a little interesting out here there are three women in the game shabakova fukushi and dababa and uh dababa and shabakova are still pretty much running in lockstep but fukushi is just off of them and they split and went their separate ways for a little bit so what i think is happening is Fukushi is trying to stay out of the mental game here. She's just drafting off them. She looks very easy and very strong. Shabakova is in her zone. She's totally focused. And Dababa looks a little bit like a deer in the headlights. She's really in uncharted territory. Now we have to remember that Fukushi has run one marathon, but at 30 kilometers, she fell apart and she still finished in a 240. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with her, but I think she's she's running within herself right now, and Dababa is still smiling, and uh, Lilia is just totally focused. She seems to be having better success with her water bottles. I'm a little worried about Dababa. She's not getting the fluids that I think she needs to be getting at this point in the race. So we'll have to see what plays out as we come up to 10 miles very shortly here. Uh, yeah, we just saw the, the last fluid station. It looked yeah, like uh, the Baba completely yes. missed her bottle. Right. But she did pick up some water shortly thereafter. Joan, real quick, uh, Steve Jones, who won alongside of you in 1985, is in the booth. Steve, Hi, Joan, Joan anything you guys want to say? You, you, got, you got the best job here on the motorbike. It's hard to believe that was 27 years ago. All right, tell me. Tell I me. still feel as though I'm cooling down from that race, Steve. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. So the women, uh, is their 15K is uh, 49.15. What's that on pace for you guys? 218, mid 218. 218, pace, 218, yeah. 218 pace. Still rolling at 218, which is uh, um, uh, well under the 220 that Shobakova had said that she wanted to run. And I think think the fact that Dababa is right there by her shoulder, I don't think it's got her rattled at all. But I think she may be a little bit surprised that she has company this far into the race. Fukushi may be running the smartest race, just letting the two battle ahead of her and just kind of uh, watching them as they as they kind of uh, take in each other. Uh, I don't know that they even know uh, that Fukushi is there lurking behind her. You know, it's interesting about Fukushi. She's a 10-time national champion at five and 10,000 meters or 10 meters. Uh, very, very, very fast runner. But you know, Lilia Shobakova was initially started as a 5,000 meter runner right. as well. Exactly, it had the world record indoors. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that uh, you take those fast uh, legs and you move up distance, that longer distance just feels very comfortable for you. Okay, we are 51 minutes and 21 seconds into today's race. Ginger, I still have my long sleeves on. It's not quite warm enough to take them off. What's the what's the weather looking right now, like right now? Well, the sun is doing its job, Paula, and it is warming us up. We started mild downtown in the mid 60s. A couple places, probably where you are, feel more like the low 60s for your fresh forecast. It's still going to be mostly sunny, and we will still end up in the upper 70s and low 80s today. So it is going to be a warm day, but at least the moisture in the air is not too high. You'll want to stick around. There's much more coming up on the Chicago Marathon after this break. And we're back out here in the Lakeview neighborhood. You can see a lot of the runners uh, going...
Ginger mentioned just a moment ago 